Have you heard of the word attachment? What does that have to do with parenting? Hi there, and welcome back to Ask Dr. Syra, the show where I answer your questions about personal growth, mental health, and relationships. So today's question comes from Zena. Zena asks, can you explain the relationship between attachment and parenting? Can you explain the relationship between attachment and parenting? That's a great question um, because that word attachment is kind of around um, in the personal growth world and it means specific things to specific people depending on the context. So the way that I use attachment, the, the concept of attachment actually comes from attachment theory. So attachment theory states, to keep it really simple, that the bond between the parent and the child is the most crucial bond for the child's um, development, optimal development. And so if the child is not adequately bonded to the parent, parents, parental unit, um, things can things can go awry. So that's a very simple answer of how they're connected. But let me go a little bit deeper. So <clears throat> first, let's think about what is attachment? Um, attachment is just a fancy word for bonding, really. Being connected, being bonded, um, wanting to be with. And um, these experiments that they did with, um, this, they started the experiments with like other mammals, like monkeys and rats and things. Um, but eventually there were some human experiments as well, simple ones, um, where they looked at how babies managed distance and separation from their primary caregivers, babies who had kind of a stay-at-home parent um, and how they managed that separation and what it did kind of, and they followed babies over time. So there's been lots of work and research done in this space on attachment. And what we found is pretty much the same in nature, right? That baby mammals need their caregivers. Um, we cannot survive without them. And they did, they, they looked at, um, so there was, there's an orphanage in uh, Romania after World War II, and they were looking at, you know, those babies and how they fared. And many of them, it was a very institutionalized type of place where there wasn't much care and tenderness. The babies were fed and they were cleaned, uh, but they basically just like lied in their cribs all day. Nobody picked them up. Nobody talked to them. And those babies failed to thrive. Many of them died um, early death. So we know from kind of situations like that, that, Having an attentive, engaged caregiver makes a difference to how children thrive, not just emotionally, but physically as well in their physical bodies. So kind of have a sense of what attachment is bonding to keep it really simple. So what do kids actually need from their parents? It seems like, I don't know if you're a parent, but as a parent, sometimes it feels like kids need everything from their parents. Um, but if we want to really distill it down, um, kids need loving, caring attention, right? That's what kids need. They need structure, um, boundaries, and loving, caring attention. What children need is parents who are present, pretty much. Parents who have been able to kind of <laughs> regulate their own internal drama so they can show up and actually be adults for these children and guide them and move them. Now, if you didn't have that growing up, if you didn't have a parent who was kind of steady and stable and ready to kind of, you know, coach you in the journey of your path and your life, um, then you wouldn't have seen that role model, right? So you'll be learning a lot of this for the first time, possibly, if you never had that kind of stable, steady um, home growing up. Not necessarily home, but even the parent. So for example, um, I'll give you a personal example. I live with um, clinical depression. So there was a time in my children's development where I was in a depressive episode, right? And that profoundly impacted my kids because I wasn't well. And so they weren't doing well. And as a family, we tried to manage that as best as we could. Now the long-term um, like fallout of that I don't know. I don't know. We'll see if they're in therapy in 30 years, right? Or whatever. And they might be. Um, so the other thing about attachment is we have to give ourselves a little bit of a break as parents. Like you can't always be there 24 um, seven attending to every single need of your child. It's just not realistic for most of us. And so 
creating a bond with your child such that even when you're not around, they feel like they can come to you. They feel like they can count on you. Um, that's really, really important. And one of the ways that we do that is we actually try to listen more to our kids rather than informing or explaining or like forcing our kids to do things. And I mean, up to a certain age, you have to kind of be, you know, the you have to be the captain of the ship because they're not there yet. But around age 10, kids are more able to um, have their own ideas, their own opinions. And so as our children get a little bit older, the attachment, the style of attachment will change. It might not be as much like cuddling and holding. It might be more of like intellectual engagement with your children. But that's important, right? Just because they get older doesn't mean they don't still need you, um, even into the teenage years. So that attachment, that connection has to start when they're little and then it kind of grows and evolves as they grow. And if you missed that with them, if you have kids that you kind of missed that period of time for whatever reason, you can always start today, right? One of my teachers, Chuck Spazano, says it's never too late to have a happy childhood. So you can start today and heal perhaps some of those intergenerational um, patterns that have come down where parents and children are not bonded um, because parents are just overly stressed or stretched or distracted um, or unavailable for whatever reason. So that's, I could talk about this all day, but um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a sense of the relationship between parenting and attachment. Um, if you want to learn more about attachment, there's lots of videos on YouTube. Psych2Go is a website, uh, a YouTube channel that I really like that really explains it kind of from an evidence-based perspective on attachment. Um, and also, if you're looking, if you're curious about attachment in the context of your romantic relationships, um, Dr. Sue Johnson has written books on that. So she's, that's also a really interesting read if you want to know more. All right. Talk to you soon. See you next time. Bye. 